Hello everybody, Sparkster1701 here. It's time to take a look at another vintage Generation 1 Transformer. And we're going to take a look at something special this week. This is one of the last toys that was made. This is a MicroMaster Combiner Transport. This one specifically is the Tanker Truck. It's also known as the Tanker Transport, however you want to call it. It was released in 1990. It would be one of the last toys released, and we would not get a replacement for it. Before I forget to mention, this unit functions in ground defense and counterattack. And the MicroMasters included with it are Pipeline and Gusher. This, uh, this is a toy that utilizes the MicroMaster Combiner feature. For those of you who might remember last month, I reviewed the Astro Squad, where the unit could break, the, could break apart from the large vehicle and you could reconnect them in any sort of combination you chose. This kind of plays up on it by having a larger unit in between that can be sandwiched between the two vehicles. And of course this thing also does all the transforming and it has a couple of alternate modes to go with it. So that kind of helps in the popularity of these toys as there are only three different ones made. This one, the Autobot Missile Launcher, and the Decepticon Cannon Transport. All three of those toys are rather difficult to find. They're not impossible. I have all three of them. But it did take quite a bit of searching to find them. And even more searching to find all the paperwork for them. This is the only one that I believe I have everything for. But anyway, let's start off by taking a look at the MicroMasters, and then we'll go through the whole toy. Alright, for starters, we'll take a look at Pipeline here. He functions in the ground defense portion of this unit. He's a quiet individual. He specializes in defensive tactics due to mainly the fact that he doesn't like to be hurt himself either physically or emotionally, so he doesn't have a whole lot of friends and is too concerned with perfecting his craft of a defense special a strategist. Unfortunately, since he's so quiet, he doesn't work too well with Gusher over there and thus finds that his plans are often ruined, forcing him to rethink things. But, as the other Autobots have noticed, the partnership has started to make Pipeline become more friendly and assertive, so in some unintentional way, Gusher's probably forcing him to act a little differently. As far as articulation goes for Pipeline, he can swing his arms up all the way back here. They catch on the front bumper of his vehicle mode, otherwise they can just fold all the way straight down like so. He can bend at the hip, about 90 degrees, and he can bend at the knees at 90 degrees and do a full sit down. The only downside to this is that his legs are all one solid piece. Unlike many of the sports car patrol members I showed you last week. Let's set him back down here. Just the book here, and then I'll be right back with you folks. Ah, here we are. Here he is. Next up, we have his partner, Gusher, who focuses on the counterattack portion. Move your arms down, buddy, so everybody can get a good look at you. Gusher's always the one that's thinking how to hit the enemy back as hard as possible. So his eagerness to fight back often undermines the defensive plans that Pipeline is trying to set up. <laughs> I 
Gusher's always so eager to fight that he perceives any statement as an attack or contradiction of his opinion, he is immediately ready to let loose a volley of counterattacks with some insults to boot. So you've pretty much got yourself a rather wild bunch of Autobots here in charge of this unit. Now as far as his articulation goes, he's more free on the arms. He can rotate the arms all the way around. And like many of the other MicroMasters, he can bend at the hip and bend at the knee to do a full sit-down position. And again, the blah, his legs are all one solid piece. Alright, that, that covers the characters. Let's get them transformed. We'll start at first with Pipeline. You'll fold his arms all the way down to the sides. Then you're going to take the front bumper and snap it down on his head. And then you just fold the legs up, solidly form the front end of their vehicle mode. Get Gusher here to form the back end. You'll move the shovel back out of the way. Fold his arms down straight. And then bend his legs back and snap his arms into place. Then you can bring the shovel down a bit. And connect them together. And they form some sort of long ground pounding vehicle. They're basically a recolor of grit and knockout from the constructor squad. Which is kind of disappointing, but it does work out. And they do have eight sets of mo eight moving wheels. So let's see how they roll along this table here. Rolls pretty good for a construction vehicle, doesn't it, folks? Now comes the bonus feature. Since of their unique way to combine... Actually, any MicroMaster combiner can go along with this, but you can combine them and connect them if they will line up. Like so. And there you have it. They've combined and can tow this uh, fuel tanker into battle. How do well does it roll with them? Not quite as smoothly due to the weight, but when you can get them going, it goes. It goes pretty fast. Part of it is, is that since they've, oh, the way they're combined, they're slightly elevating, especially the front end of the tanker truck. But even with that, it does does roll pretty good on this smooth table. I wouldn't imagine how well it's going to roll on the carpet beneath me, but it at least rolls pretty smooth on this table. Now let's move on to transforming this thing. The first thing we got to do is get these guys off and put them back together and put them aside for a moment. Now the first mode that this thing has is as a battle station. To make the battle station mode, first thing we got to do is we got to remove the ramps that are on the sides. And just twist them until they come off. And of course we got to remove the cannons. Just like that. Now, on the front end here, you'll notice that we got the holes here on the top, and it's split down the middle. So all you do is fold it out 
to the sides, like so. As you can see, the back end is split also down the middle, but if you'll notice on the sides, it's hinged at the side. So, you'll just separate that and fold it over to the sides, like so. Set it down there for a moment. Now you'll get the ramps, and you can connect them to the front and to the rear of the toy. Then you'll get the cannons, and you just connect them into those holes that we saw earlier. You connect the gray portion, so I'd quit knocking them apart. We'll start with this one over here. Connect it like that. Do the same with this one. And then there you go. You got a battle station. And of course, with these ramps here on it, you can drive your MicroMasters right through it. Now, since these ramps are very similar to the ones that are included with the battle stations and a lot of the large play sets that the MicroMasters have had over the year prior and this current year they were released, you can connect these to them, to their city modes, and basically use them as a bridgeway between the different cities. So it's kind of, that's a pretty cool idea. You can reconfigure your city as you play. Now, fair amount of you might be saying, Hey, Sparkster, that's enough fun for me right there. But we're not done yet. Oh, no, sir. We are not done yet. First thing we're going to do is get those MicroMasters out of the way. And off camera here, we're going to quickly get them back into their robot modes because we're going to need them that way in a moment. And then next, take the cannons off and the ramps. And then next, as you may have noticed when we had this thing open, there's a seam Probably not that easy to see on the camera. Right in the middle here. All you do is pull them apart. And there you have it. Then next, for a little added firepower, you just insert the gray base on the cannons into the center of the vehicle. Like so. And then you can simply stand the MicroMaster guy is right behind it. And there you go. You have a pair of battle emplacements. And since these things are on their own plastic wheels, they are free to roll around. The only downside with the way this one is designed in particular is there's no way to secure the MicroMaster. The other two toys, there's at least some way for him to either really suspend himself in there or it's done up where it's a little cockpit so the guy can be placed sitting down in it. And just so you can see, this one also rolls around and with the way these cannons are hinged they can adjust fire pretty well straight down from the bottom of the unit and point pretty high in the air too so this is this isn't too bad it's not perfect but it is kind of fun now let's take a look, quick look at the loose parts for the tanker truck. 
Start with this. This is the front end of the trailer. As you can see here, the front wheels do turn a little. <sighs> Come on. Sorry, folks. Got to sneeze. Shy. Coming. Excuse me. And of course, this is the side that opens up, and there's the missiles in there. They don't fire or anything, so they're more for pretend to play. And then we got the back half. Which the back half just hinges apart like so. And the rear section of it also is on a hinge, but... It doesn't pivot as easily. It feels like it wants to, but it's not set up to do so, so don't force it. All right, we also have two of these ramps. Two blue ramps, but the thing you'll notice about them is on the underside, they have a little post. This is how they connect onto the truck when it's in truck mode. Then you have two of these cannons. You got a black cannon and a gray hinged piece. And as you kept seeing on the one sample, they can separate. Sorry, the gray piece just slid out of my hands. They're connected by a couple of simple tabs. That go into the holes on the top and bottom of the gun. They don't stay in very well, so they will gradually wear out and constantly fall off. So, something you'll have to keep watch for when you're buying loose samples of this toy. Because if they don't have these, they will not connect very well when the toy is in the other modes. And that's all the loose pieces for it. Alright, since this toy was sold in a box, naturally, we've got some instructions to look at here. As you can see here, it lists this toy as Tanker Transport. Whereas on its tech spec, it lists it as Tanker Truck. And that you get a couple of nice little pictures of it here. And then a shot of what all it includes. And this first bit here shows you how to get it set up into the mode that you see behind them. Where you would combine the, put the robots on the front and back ends. Then attach the cannons and the ramps. And then now how to make it into the battle station mode. Pretty simple. And then now into the battle emplacements. Better fingers. And then lastly, how to transform the robots. And then mount them on the emplacements. And then a fair amount of stickers to put on this toy. And then back here to collect and save your robot points and your tech specs. Even though oh, this was 1990 and they're still using Blue Streak. I don't know why they didn't notice that. Moving right along, we'll take a look at their tech spec card. It's done up in red to show that they are Autobots, even says Autobot up here. And it's got a nice picture of them using taking the unit into battle. Although it's likely using a... Nope. I thought it was using an older version, maybe a prototype version of the toy, but it does look pretty accurate. It gives the name as Tanker Truck and lists their function as ground defense and counterattack. 
Their motto is, leave the enemy spitting dust and bolts. Headstrong heroes of armor and steel, able to carry emergency reinforcements and fuel supplies to any area of confrontation. Combines to form fully equipped battle platform and heavy hitting assault vehicle. Employs twin gun emplacement for defensive maneuvers that blast Decepticons into deep space. Utilizing the MicroMaster Combiner feature, able to connect with other MicroMaster Combiners to form fast attack vehicles equipped with multifunctional combat and transport capabilities. Commanded by Pipeline and Gusher, who spend more time fighting each other than fighting the enemy. Now that was written kind of silly there, folks. I think it's a bit of an over-exaggeration, but... That was starting to become prevalent in 90s toys. So I'm sure if you check out some of the other toy reviewers, like for many of the others that do the Transformers or even G.I. Joes, you could tell that by the time the 1990s rolled around, Hasbro was more or less throwing believability out the window for silliness. Now we move on here to their tech spec grid. And it shows their strength is 8, their intelligence is 7, their speed is 6, their endurance is 9, their rank is 8, their courage is 10, their firepower is 5, and their skill is 7. So all in all, you've got a pretty powerful unit here. Now we get down to my thoughts. What do I think of the tanker truck? The tanker truck has potential to be a pretty interesting toy. I mean, the fact that the thing looks more like an oil tanker. I could easily see many of us, when we were playing with this thing as children, as pretending the thing was loaded with energon, and then that would make it more important to the Autobot war effort. So it made for a good battle piece for, for the various play scenarios we would have carried on and our basements, or our living rooms, or even outdoors. The battle station mode, that's pretty fun. I like the way it was set up, and I like the way it could have been used. I mean, you get two side cannons on it and a missile launcher with eight rockets in it. That's bringing in the heavy artillery, and the fact that you could connect it to between two of the different play sets definitely gave some nice versatility and battle preparation. The emplacement mode, that's where this toy starts to fail. Since as I've said, I have all three of them, and I know on the missile launcher and the cannon transport, there are ways to secure the MicroMasters a little bit better in it. The, uh, this one, unfortunately, does not have anything to keep the MicroMaster from falling out of it as it rolls into battle. So, I mean, I know that to put something in there would have made it not as usable to drive the MicroMasters through it. I get that. I really do get that. But... Would a second hole have really caused a problem in there? I mean, a small one that even if you just bent these guys at the knee and plugged them into it, that would at least allow them to stay somewhat secured on it when you rolled the emplacements around. Otherwise, all they were going to do was just constantly fall out, and that eventually causes you to lose interest in using them in that mode, since there's no way for them to stay put on it. But all in all, despite that, and despite the cheapness of the MicroMasters that it includes, I'm still going to put this toy in the top tier. I do think that the Combiner Transports was a good idea for Hasbro to use with these. And I'm kind of sorry they didn't do more of them. I think that a lot of us would have probably been able to come up with some really elaborate MicroMaster play areas if we had more of these guys available to us as an option. 
I mean, who's to say we couldn't try to string a bunch of these together to make one long battle station roadway in between all of the little play sets. But all in all, despite this set's shortcomings, I still think it's a top-tier toy, folks, so definitely seek this one out. And that concludes my review of the Generation 1 Autobot Ground Defense and Counterattack Unit, the Tanker Truck. If you like the video, please leave a thumbs up here on YouTube. Also, don't forget, hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Please also consider sharing a like for this video, and share your thoughts on the toy in the comments section down below. This is Sparkster1701 saying I will catch you all later.